Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 19th, 2017. The Cooner Report, presented by Kelly Financial Services. This is the Cooner Report. Let there be blood. Okay, my friends, unbelievable. Now the Democrats ratchet up their rhetoric to now say if Trump should fire Special Counsel Mueller, there will be blood. Eric Holder took to Twitter saying that if there should be any decision by the president, and the last time we checked, the president in fact even told the press corps he has no intentions of filing of firing, forgive me, Robert Mueller. Uh, he doesn't like the way he's operated. He's conducted himself. Certainly uh, illegally obtaining the transition emails has put a real black eye on Mueller and his entire investigation. But as far as Trump is concerned, I've got no intention whatsoever of firing Robert Mueller. But that hasn't stopped the Democrats. And so amazingly... Eric Holder, the former attorney general, took to Twitter to vow that if Trump should fire Mueller, there will not just be a constitutional crisis, but listen to this, according to Mueller, sorry, according to Holder, the firing of Mueller will trigger and spark millions of people, quote unquote, to take to the streets saying that it could lead eventually to violence and even civil war. And it's not just former Attorney General Eric Holder. Joe Scarborough on MS Left BC said that if Trump should fire Mueller or try to in any way neuter or obstruct Mueller's investigation, that there will be violence and there will be war. But it's not even just Joe Scarborough. Now, listen to this. He's back from the dead. Marcula, I want to suck your blood. Take your money. Well, there's been a sighting of Marcula. He literally told the Boston Herald several days ago that if Trump should fire Mueller, quote-unquote, this will lead to an uprising. According to what Marky told the Boston Herald, this will lead to a mass, spontaneous uprising, he says, similar to what happened over 200 years ago when we took up arms against King George III. And in fact, he openly now compares Trump to King George III, saying that Trump was colluding with a foreign dictator, a foreign potentate, as Markula put it, just as King George III was a foreign potentate who was trying to meddle, according to Markey, in the internal affairs of Massachusetts and the 13 colonies. And he said, just like the patriots, the Minutemen, took their guns and fought street battles against the British, this is exactly what you're going to see happen in Massachusetts, he says, and around the country, if Trump should fire Mueller. Now, the significance of this cannot be understated enough. The significance of this is, to me, it's unbelievable. Because now this glorification of violence, this threat of violence, is no longer now just with Antifa, or Black Lives Matter, it's now gone from the streets right now to the upper echelons of the Democratic Party. Now we're talking about senior Obama administration officials. Now we're talking about prominent Democratic senators. Now we're talking about MSNBC and CNN. This has been their drumbeat now for the last three to four days. That any criticism of Mueller, any criticism of the investigation is for them borderline treason. And if Trump should fire Mueller, justification for mass violence and even potential civil war. My friends, I don't know what else to tell you. 
They're insane. These people are unhinged. They become unhinged. And I want you to think about the moon bats for a second, okay? These are the very same people. Crucify Jesus. No problem. No problem. Uh, ISIS beheading Christians all across the Middle East and Obama laughing at them, calling them the JV team. No problem. They laugh. Uh, constant jokes about beheading Trump, shooting Trump, killing the president. Uh, no problem. But you say a bad word against Robert Mueller, you better be careful. You're going to see war. There will be blood. So I, I got to ask this question now that we're what? Like, uh, you know, whatever it is, six days now before Christmas. Who died and made Robert Mueller the Messiah? I'm sorry, did the uh, angel Gabriel come down to the Virgin Mary and said, you will have an FBI director and then a special counsel, and his name shall be Robert Mueller III, a.k.a. Bob, and Bob is the chosen one, Bob is the Messiah, Bob will be my son, the son of God, that you cannot say anything against Bob Mueller. I mean, so, see, what the, what's going on here is this. They now know that Mueller is being exposed for the corrupt charlatan that he is. That he's nothing more than a deep state hack. And that his investigation, the wheels are coming off. That he is deeply corrupt and deeply compromised. And so, rather than deal with the truth that there was no Russia collusion that there was no obstruction of justice on the part of Trump, that he had every right to fire Comey, that, in fact, when you just objectively stand back for a second, Mueller should never have been appointed to be the special counsel. He was best friends and buddies with James Comey. That's a conflict of interest right there. And then on top of it all, have you noticed this? It's been weeks now, weeks Fox News, CNN, MS Left BC, it doesn't matter. Every Beltway insider that you can find, they all come on the air and say, oh, there's no more straight shooter than Bob Mueller. Oh, he's straight as an arrow. Man of immense integrity. I've known Mueller for decades. There's no better man. There's no straighter arrow than Bob Mueller. That's exactly the problem. That's exactly the problem. Every Beltway insider vouches for this guy. He is the epitome of the swamp creature. I mean, if everybody in the swamp loves this guy, that tells you everything you need to know that this guy is exactly the guy not to run an independent, nonpartisan, impartial investigation. But it gets even worse. What is now clearly happening is that the entire fantasy world that has been erected now for over a year, that Trump colluded with Vladimir Putin to alter the election and decisively steal it from Hillary Clinton, this figment of the liberals' imagination, of the establishment's imagination, is now all coming, crashing down around them. And they can't handle it. It's like the flat earthers who were told the world is round. They were so invested in this narrative, so personally and professionally invested, that somehow Trump could not have won it fair and square. And that Hillary Rotten, the anointed one, that she just, that she lost it fair and square. They cannot concede that this was an indictment against the ruling class. They will not accept it. They cannot accept it. And so now, as their worldview is crumbling around them, now they feel the need to protect Robert Mueller and his sham investigation at all costs. To the point, you're now threatening war? To me, what is incredible is... You now have the Democratic senator, okay? I know Warren's the senior one, but he's the, the junior senator. 
from Massachusetts. You're telling me this is going to be 1776 all over again? You're telling me there will be a quote-unquote uprising? If Trump fires Mueller, are you kidding me? You want to launch this country in a bloodbath, in a civil war? In your, desper- in your desperation to topple Trump? And they're out of control. No, they really are out of control. Now, and we're not even, by the way, we're not even a year into this guy's presidency. Well, now it's coming out, it's even worse. The Wall Street Journal has now broken the story today. Remember when Peter Strzok, Mueller's top lieutenant, the point man on Hillary Clinton's private server investigation who exonerated her before he even uh, investigated the case. When he talked about inf- in that famous infamous text messages between himself and his, uh, the FBI lawyer, his lover and mistress, who, by the way, were so turned on by their love affair for Hillary and their hatred for Donald Trump, that was the basis of their nefarious affair. Okay, that's, that's how much they hate Trump and loved Hillary. It, in fact, it turned them on. That's what got the juices, the romantic sexual juices flowing between them. But let that go. In that infamous text message where he says to her, you know, the path you outlined in Andy's office, i.e. Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe, who, by the way, is going to be grilled on the Hill today, and I'm going to have that for you tomorrow, that Hillary is going to win. I'd like to believe it, but we need an insurance policy. We need to ensure that Trump doesn't win. The Wall Street Journal has now, uh, through their investigative reporting, now they have revealed, you know what that insurance policy was? Investigate Trump for alleged collusion with Russia. Peter Strzok was the man who initiated that investigation and first signed uh, signed on to it. He's the one that signed off on it, then got Comey to agree to it, and then, of course, Comey told Mueller, and the deep state is, we're going to sink Trump on this bogus narrative. So, here is now exactly what took place. Peter Strzok told his uh, mistress lover, we're going to ensure that Trump loses. We're not taking any chances. So what we're going to do is the FBI, along with the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC, paid for the infamous Trump dossier through the opposition group, the political research group, Fusion GPS. By the way, Bruce Orr's wife, Nellie Orr, worked at Fusion GPS and was key in contacting the guy who wrote the smear dossier, Christopher Steele. Bruce Orr and James Comey and Robert Mueller are thick as thieves. You see how the circle works? And then they said, let's use this bogus dossier as the justification to surveil and spy on the Trump campaign and then push this phony narrative that he is colluding with Vladimir Putin. And to their utter astonishment and horror, it didn't work. It wasn't able to derail Trump. But they kept going, saying, okay, we couldn't prevent him from winning. We're going to use that narrative now to break his presidency and drive him from office. The FBI, under Comey, under Peter Strzok, under Andrew McCabe, and under Robert Mueller, who was Comey's mentor and best friend, went rogue. And they decided they were going to throw their weight behind Hillary Clinton and bring down Donald Trump. And when he won a miraculous election, they have said, you know what? We're not going to stop. Our insurance policy is heads we win, tails you lose. So even though Trump won, we are now going to prosecute him. We're going to persecute him. We're going to investigate him. We're going to do everything we need to do to drive this man from office. That's why Marky's talking about an uprising on the streets. 
That's why Eric Holder is saying there will be millions out on the streets and there will be blood. Because Mueller is the tip of the spear of their silent coup against Donald Trump. And God forbid he should cut off the head of the snake by firing Mueller. And so my question now to you is this. Have the Democrats fundamentally discredited themselves by now raising the specter of an uprising or violence should Trump fire Mueller? And let me ask you a second question. Is Markey right? If Trump does fire Mueller, will there be blood? 617-266-6868. Your calls next. 1223 here on the great WRKO. The number to call, 617-266-6868. You can text us as always, 680-680. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. Okay, front page story in today's Washington Post. Apparently now, as you know, Mueller has loaded up his team with Democratic donors rabid pro-Hillary and never-Trump partisans. According now to the Washington Post, these investigators have now told the Washington Post that Robert Mueller plans to keep the investigation going for quote-unquote at least another year. He says that he's nowhere close to ending this investigation. Uh, in fact, he is just at the beginning this is going to go on till at least the end of 2018, probably into 2019. The goal now is to just drag this thing out, and Mueller is now on a massive fishing expedition. Remember, what is unique about this special counsel, no crime has been alleged. You know, Watergate, there was actual break-in. This is a, um, an investigation in search of a crime. And Mueller says he's going to keep looking and looking and looking. And now that conservatives like the Cooner Man, along with Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, and others, are now blasting Robert Mueller for this clearly partisan, um, really almost despicable, disgusting witch hunt, CNN is melting down, saying that people like me and Hannity and Levin are leading to a massive divide, and how dare you criticize the king, Robert Mueller. Roll it, Brittany. There's a feedback loop between these commentators who know what the president wants to hear, and then the president says similar comments, which then reinforces and emboldens uh, these pro-Trump hosts. It's definitely something to pay attention to as we hear this drumbeat about Mueller, because we know polls show the majority of the public is very supportive of the Mueller probe. They want to know what really happened uh, with Russia's meddling in the election last year. But there is a vocal minority of the country that is fed by hosts like Hannity, who are incredibly skeptical of Mueller. Uh, it's a real example of the divide in the country and how conservative media is fueling that divide right now. I mean, this is incredible. That's, by the way, Brian Stelter. That's a shorty over there at, uh, at CNN. That's Brian Stelter. And uh, he looks like one of the seven dwarfs, but let that go. So there he is. CNN has been leading the pack in fomenting division and hatred in this country. That's all they've been doing since, the, what, what's, for, since before the election. They're the, uh, the, the epitome, the embodiment of fake news. So let me get this straight. Democrats are threatening actual violence and bloodshed now if Trump should fire Mueller. But it's people like Cooner and Hannity and Levin that are leading the divide in America? Oh, please. what I tell you? The Crap News Network. Skippy and Southie, you're up first. Go ahead, Skippy. Hey, Jeff. Hi. You mentioned Ed Markey. He's, no, he's basically doing calling for people to take to the streets. He's, he's echoing what Mike Capuano did a year or so ago, calling for blood in the streets. So it's, it's amazing how they're from Massachusetts. That's how they think. What a shame. But also, Eric Holder, this guy should be in prison, and so should his boss, 
Obama. That that, that demonic duo should be uh, cellmates. Fast and Furious, Obstructing Justice, uh, Ferguson, the Black Panthers, and the voting booths and all that. Uh, they're the chief collaborators of Islamic extremists uh, in Iran, you know, What's going on there? Agitating racial violence from the first day he got in office. Obama's in D.C. That's like his headquarters now. We all his agitators and collaborators and and keep it anarchists. They get the he's still pulling the strings. Financed by George Soros, bolstered up by the left wing media and the demonic, degenerate Democrat party. Anybody who calls himself a Democrat should be deeply ashamed. They are sick and twisted. I'm uh, Skippy. I'm with you. And just when you thought they couldn't go lower, look at this. Now, say what you want about Holder. He's a gun runner, okay, with Fast and Furious. So if they take to the streets, I think Mueller through the Mexican drug cartels, he'll be able to supply them with some real heavy firepower. The question I have for Markula is, if he's calling for a violent uprising, what, is this going to be an army of vampires? Like what, we're going to make a Hollywood movie out of this? You know, Markula strikes back. <laughs> you know, and you'll see like a, an army of zombies, moon bats, and vampires, bloodsuckers on the streets of Boston. <laughs> and maybe, maybe we'll have Mark Wahlberg play Markula or something, and you know, or Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, and they could all join in, and we could turn this into a, a Hollywood blockbuster. So I know Holder will bring in the guns. What does Markula bring in? The vampires and the zombies? Eddie and Quincy. Go ahead, Eddie. Jeff, you still there? Hello? Eddie, go ahead, my friend. All right, there we are. Uh, Jeff, people should start to realize that the FBI getting involved in an investigation is a hell of a lot worse than Russia. And nobody's talking about that. Talking about that. You know, they're letting all that slide. And let me go back to Hillary. The FBI investigated Hillary, and two months before they even interviewed her and most of her uh, cronies, they were writing a letter saying, well, oh, she's not, in, she's not guilty. And now we've got this, they got nothing in over 12 months, nothing on Trump and Russia collusion. And all you hear is we've got to let this play out. Well, Eddie, look, it's, it's to me, and you're right. Look, if I'm the president, there's a certain point where I say put up or shut up. I mean, you've been at this now for over a year. You have unlimited resources, unlimited money, unlimited time, unlimited lawyers, You've turned over every stone imaginable. You can't find a thing. So now they just want to get them on process crimes. That's what this is all about. So they're petrified now at the prospect that Trump may pull the plug. And so all they have left now is violence. Now, look, to be fair to Markula, that's why he wants blood. Because if you're a vampire, that's what you need. The more blood, the better. 617 266 6868. Okay, the latest today is going to be a big vote on the historic tax cuts. Jackie Murphy in the WRKO newsroom has the latest on that. Take it away, Jack. Jeff Cooner, more American than a Tim Hortons double double. Who the hell's Tim Hortons? You're in Cooner Country on WRKO. Twelve thirty-six here on the great WRKO. Okay, Robert Mueller's confidants, uh, people close to him, have now told the Washington Post that the special uh, investigator, the special counsel, is not closing down anytime soon. He says the investigation is going to go on for at least another year into twenty nineteen. Uh, guys, at this point, let's just be honest. Just say July 1st, 2020. That's what you guys really want so you can try to derail Trump from his re-election victory. That's what this is all about. Come on now. Let's not kid each other anymore. So, as now Mueller comes under increasing criticism and spotlight for his corruption, for his partisan political witch hunt, now the mainstream media is going apoplectic that anybody dare criticize the new Messiah. It's not Jesus. No, no, no. December 25th is the day Robert Mueller now was born, according to the liberal media and the Democratic hacks. So you can't say anything against the new Messiah, Robert Mueller, and as themselves, as Markey and um, 
a former Attorney General Eric Holder, as they talk about blood on the streets and an uprising, should Mueller be fired? Listen now to MS Left BC's John Heileman saying, no, 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 no. All of this criticism of Mueller, it's going to lead to another Timothy McVeigh. It's going to lead to more violence, but from conservatives. Roll it, Brittany. I, but I do want to say the thing that I think you're pointing to, which is really important, and I, it's not the first time in the course of the last 12 months where I felt compelled to just remind people yeah. of what happened in Oklahoma City now about a decade ago, or two decades ago now, in, the, in, the, in 1995? 1995, when McVeigh... Yes, 1995, up, uh, the yes. The building, and some of us uh, in this business had to fly out there and, and see what paranoid conspiratorial anti-government ranting led to, yeah. right. which was a militia member funny. going and blowing up a federal building and killing daycare, so. hundreds of people. Yeah. It, it's, it hasn't happened yet, thank yeah. God, and hopefully it won't, but yeah. every time you are striking these matches and throwing them at this thank giant you. pool of gasoline, yeah. yes. you are courting this kind of disaster. Oh, yeah. And when it happens, correct. we will be able to point to the people who helped enable it happening quite pointedly because they're on television every day doing it. See, there you go. There you go. Come on, everybody. Get a giant can, you know, get fertilizer and a giant can of gasoline. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. Because conservatives, Trump supporters, they're going to start blowing up buildings. I mean, this is incredible. And by the way, this is not some crazy fringe, I don't know, network. You know, I don't know, somewhere in Seattle, Washington. Okay? Or in uh, whatever, San Francisco, California. This is one of their top analysts on, on MSNBC. I mean, I'm just, and you're peddling this kind of garbage? Because we dare to criticize Robert Mueller? Hey, look, to all the moon bats out there, okay? Let's get the, let's set the record straight. Number one, we have the First Amendment right to criticize anybody. Number two, I hate to tell you this, but federal agencies and special prosecutors are not immune from criticism. And when there are, when there is massive corruption or conflicts of interest, part of their investigation, people have the moral and ethical obligation to point them out. And what I find most despicable of all is, he can't remember 1995. Okay, try 1998, 1999. Do you remember when Ken Starr was investigating, Hill, uh, forgive me, Bill Clinton? Oh, my God. The liberal media, all they did was savage, trash, and excoriate Ken Starr. Oh, my. They called him every name in the book. The New York Times, the Boston Globe, the Washington Post, uh, NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN. They had James Carville on almost every day. They were calling him a pornographer because he was documenting the illicit sexual affair that Bill Clinton was having with Monica Lewinsky, documented what was taking place, you know, underneath the desk at the Oval Office. They were li libeling him as a freaking pornographer. Oh, when it was time for Ken Starr, oh, oh, then they could roast the guy. But when it comes now to the new Messiah, Robert Mueller III, oh, oh, royalty Robert, no, 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 no. King Bob, you don't say a word. You don't say anything against King Bob because you're going to see a revolution. Enough is enough. Nobody is above the law and nobody is above criticism. And that includes special counsels who work for the deep state. 617-266-6868. Lines are loaded. Anne in North Attleboro. Go ahead, Anne. Uh, Jeff, you're so off base on this one. Are you sitting down? Strap in. Okay. Go ahead. Trump is... Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead. Trump, Shoot. Floor is yours. Trump is orchestrating this whole thing right down to the Jeff Sessions recusing himself. You can't investigate people. They've already gotten rid of all their evidence, okay? Mueller is the gift that keeps on giving. Why would you fire him? The left wants him to fire him. They need Mueller to shut up and the people he's bringing in to shut up, okay? What's happened is they've dropped their guard because they think they got what they wanted. When 
when Trump takes over and Sessions takes over, it will be a perp walk like you will not imagine, and the evidence will be there in their own words. Okay, Anne, can you just flesh this out a little bit? Like a perp walk for who? For everybody that's that's been involved in the, the collusion and the lying. What's going on now is Jeff Sessions is investigating them. But Jeff Sessions couldn't investigate them with the FBI he had. Okay, why do you think they didn't want Roy Moore there? Roy Moore would be somebody Jeff Sessions could trust. OK, that Jeff Sessions had to set up his own investigation team. I saw a picture the other day of Donald Trump and Sessions sitting side by side, not looking at each other. And I said, picture tells a thousand words. Donald Trump shook hands with Comey before he fired him. OK, Donald Trump shows you what he wants you to see. So, and you're saying that what this is going to end up doing is it's going to expose Peter Strzok. Uh, Bruce Orr, Andrew McKay, mm-hmm. James Comey, everybody. Yep. So everybody. They, the left thinks that Mueller's doing their dirty work for them, but all he's really doing is, unco- is, is exposing all of their, the left's Absolutely. nefarious activities. Mueller is the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, leave him there. I'll let him run it for two years. We'll find out. We didn't know half the stuff we know now if it wasn't for Robert Mueller. Do you think Comey would have said... Um, that he leaked stuff to the FBI, to the Washington Post, if he didn't feel perfectly safe in the environment he was in to do it? No. And I have to tell you, I, I, I haven't heard that theory, but it's a very interesting I've watched theory. Trump for years. He's brilliant at this. He never asks a question he doesn't already know the answer to. And th- okay, and I- you, never, you never leave a room without letting people think they put one over on you. Ann, you want to do me a favor? Call again. Uh, hey, no problem. Call again, Ann. Thank you for that call. I, yeah. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if I agree with you, but but thank you for that call. I, look, I think they're out to get them. I think they're a bunch of headhunters. Um, I think, to be honest with you, I think Sessions made maybe the biggest mistake of his career to recuse himself. That opened the door for Rod Rosenstein to appoint Mueller. And I think now they have... I don't want to say derailed, but they have distracted Trump and consumed a lot of his presidency, which I think was their intention. But I have to say, when you're talking about Trump being a chess player and the damage, the collateral damage that's being done now to all of these people because of Mueller's investigation, that's an interesting theory, Ann. I'll give you, I'll give you that much. Bill in Newton, you're up next. Go ahead, Bill. Four quick points. Number one. Mr. Mr. Heilman should find other gainful employment. He's a hard leftist. Number two, Joe Scarborough, I heard him say this, that uh, Robert Mueller successfully guided us through the 9-11 and its aftermath. I believe the opposite. I believe he obfuscated and covered up. Number three, I believe Robert Mueller is, an, I, and I, I want to choose my words carefully, um, he's either, he's an agent or a conscious instrument of the uh, world government people or the one or the uh, deep state people he's covering up um, he, he, he I just feel he's just he feels Trump has to go what do you think Bill look uh, I agree with you on point one point two and point three to me I've never liked Robert Mueller I covered Robert Mueller when I was at the Washington Times uh, he always struck me as an apparatchik as a bureaucratic climber and almost he wanted to turn the FBI into a wannabe Stasi or KGB. Under Mueller, here's what happened. They covered up the role of the Saudis behind the September 11 terrorist attacks. That Mueller played a big part. The, uh, Robert Mueller was a key uh, uh, force behind the Patriot Act, which we now know was used to set up a surveillance state to spy upon Americans. Correct. And it was under Mueller that the FBI became so politicized and so corrupted. He appoint, He's the guy that basically uh, uh, coddled uh, 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 James Comey. He coddled Comey and nurtured his career, cultivated his career. So he was the one that began to turn the FBI almost into a rogue agency, an agency unto itself that was spying upon Americans. He's as corrupt as they come. He's a creature of the deep state, and his job is to do the bidding of the deep state. He has a pristine re- reputation, Jeff. 
Well, that's and that, that's the thing, Bill. Uh, they keep going back to him serving in Vietnam. They keep all of them. They keep saying, oh, he served in Vietnam. Oh, he got a Purple Heart. Oh, he did this. Look, great. He served in Vietnam. Please, I love the guys that served in Vietnam. Don't get me wrong. Roy Moore served several tours in Vietnam. I don't. I didn't see them saying, "Hey, hey, don't you question Roy Moore's integrity." He served several tours of duty in Vietnam. That was what fifty years ago when Robert Mueller did his tour. He's a very different man now than he was then. So uh, that's where I disagree with Anne. Look, she's very smart, very in interesting theory. I see this now as Trump versus the deep state, and what we're un what was now being unveiled is that the deep state had a plan. That's, to me, the significance of the Peter Strzok email. There's no other way to read it, in my view. We need an insurance policy. What's the insurance policy? The insurance policy was the trumped-up narrative of Trump colluding with Putin to win the election and steal it from Hillary. And we're going to use that to get him during the campaign, to spy on him, to spy on his inner circle. And when they were stunned that he won, fine, then we're going to sabotage and undermine his presidency. In other words, okay, maybe Hillary didn't win, but uh, Trump, you're never going to take the reins of power. We're going to drive you from Washington if we have to. So I see Mueller now acting on behalf of the deep state. And the reason why he won't let this investigation go, remember, this is, again, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's a point that needs to be repeated again and again. Unlike any other special counsel, there is no crime that he's investigating. This is an investigation in search of a crime. So all he wants to do now is just turn over any rock, every rock, turn everything over. And eventually, he hopes he'll find something, anything. Just ask Mike Flynn. WRKO. Andy in Nebraska, you're up next. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Jeff. First of all, I think the... I think Trump should not fire Robert Mueller because, first of all, more and more comes out about it, and the public opinion turns against him. Also, keep in mind that uh, keep in mind the people who are defending and defending Robert Mueller, Joe Scarborough with a dead intern in his office, office and so on, uh, and other serial liars like Low T. Brian Stelter. And one more, one more point. As it, uh, so, the uh, the moon bats are saying they want an uprising. Let's just compare it. So say Fast and Furious, there's a special counsel in which a Republican was appointed. All the people on the special counsel's team were Republicans who hated Obama's guts and wanted to cut his head off politically. And, uh, and, uh, and, the, uh, and Democrats say they, and Obama said he wanted to remove him, but Republicans said there would be hell to pay if they did. How would the moon bats react? Oh, they were nuts. Andy, exactly. if, in your scenario, if conservatives, if I went on the air and said, you know, you fire, let's just say, hey, let's make Mueller the guy investigating Fast and Furious, just for the sake of argument. You fire Mueller, and you're going to see an uprising. If Republicans said that, the moon bats would be, be going berserk. Andy, I'd Are be off right? the air. I'd be off the air, Andy. Yeah, low T. Brian Stelter, Stelter would probably have a probably have a mental breakdown. Although it doesn't take much for him, <laughs> he has less testosterone than me, a sixteen-year-old. <laughs> Andy, bingo, my friend. Uh, Paul in Dorchester, go ahead, Paul. Hey Jeff, speaking of striking back, we need to strike out Peter Struck. Um, I think the whole thing is a, a toothless tiger. You know, they're going after him. It's a toothless tiger with no teeth and claws, and uh, they have nothing. So if there's no outrage, not even on the Republican side, and um, even Mitch McConnell or Rhino Ryan, none of them saying, look what uh, Peter Strzok did. Look what he's written about, about Trump. Look at the text messages. Look at these guys who are violating the Constitution with all the emails they've taken from all the Trump people without no FISA warrants. So all these fake Russian dossier, it's a toothless tiger. They're gumming at Trump. So Trump needs to uh, take a stand and say, hey, 
if we got a Peter Struck, we got to pull the claws out, we got to pull the tooth out, and I want Ryan behind me, I want Mitch McConnell behind me. They always show this outrage and always fall on their sword when they, when they get ahead. They let these Democrats going around um, talking about they want blood in Wisconsin when the Tea Party won uh, a year ago. You know, Capuano, Lynch, you know, and, and Markey, they're always asking for blood, Jeff. I said, where do we take a stand? Let's pull every tooth and claw out of this toothless tiger who's not going anywhere, and don't fire Mueller. Let them, let them show this cake, cake and circus to the American people that there's nothing there. Paul, do you think if, you know, do you think this is just a way to try to blackmail people? You know, when Markey comes out and says, you know, there will be an uprising if you fire Mueller. Uh, Holder says millions will go to the streets and there will be blood. Are they just trying to essentially intimidate and bully us by saying that? Yeah, they are. It's just like the vote and die scheme thing that they had for years, Jeff. It's no one's going to come out in the streets for for Democrats or liberal lunatics. <laughs> for years, the, these same guys we've been saying the same thing. You know, Count Marcula has been asking for blood. <laughs> I don't see any blood. There's no fangs in Marcula. <laughs> Paul, thank you for that call. <laughs> oh, you listen. Look, I'll tell you this. Whenever we do one of those annual blood drives at the Red Cross. We always say, Markula is not allowed. Because, <laughs> I mean, he'll drain that whole freaking blood bank. Steve and Braintree, go ahead, Steve. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm good. How are uh, you, Steve? I guess it, I guess it appears that uh, uh, the, the whole uh, brouhaha about Flynn ratting out the president and uh, getting that deal didn't happen, because otherwise it really wouldn't take another year or two to complete this investigation. Wasn't that what they were saying? That yes. was about to rat out the president? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. But he, uh, Mueller's, Mueller's slick. Of course he needs to be continuing this, this office for the next year or two. He's got the Manafort prosecution. So if anyone questioned him on this, yeah, he's got the Manafort prosecution to finish. That thing is a complex financial crime. You're talking a year and a half, just for a year for just discovery between the two sides. He can't turn that prosecution over to the DOJ. It was started by the special counsel's office. He's going to finish prosecuting it. So if anyone asks, he could just say, yeah, I meant I'm going to be in office for two. It doesn't have anything to do with the president. But, I mean, that, that office is still going to be there until they finish with Manafort. So this, <laughs> he's slick. He's, he's very slick. I wouldn't uh, worry too much about it. This Steve, whole thing, the president's yeah. lawyer, and his name literally is Ty Cobb, like the great baseball player. His uh, personal lawyer, yeah. yeah. Ty Cobb, Trump's lawyer. He's been saying now for a while that Mueller is either going to announce that he's no longer investigating the president or he's going to be releasing a letter exonerating the president. Do you well, think well, Trump's think, lawyer is no, being what, overly what, naive and optimistic, or do you think that's no. realistic now? No, I think they made a, I think there's been a deal made. I think that the Trump's personal lawyers have gone, and the problem with this investigation is it's starting to, to divulge the deep state. So, you know, I think a deal has kind of been struck in the back that it's like, listen, Finish with Manafort. You got, you know, you got a couple of scalps. The president had, you know, there was Russian interference, but no collusion. We're moving on, and we're not going to prosecute Struck and all this other nonsense. And the deep state's just going to get to be minimally investigated behind closed doors. The IG's report comes out, and in six months, they just finish off with the prosecution. They're, they're going to work a backdoor deal to protect the deep state. That's that's how it's going to work. Interesting. So basically, you're saying Mueller is going to keep his reputation sort of intact throw a couple of these guys like Manafort in jail, everybody cuts a deal, and everybody goes home. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Coming up next, major train derailment outside of Seattle, Washington, six dead, over 77 injured. Trump says that we need to fix our crumbling infrastructure. Did he politicize a tragedy? Should he have waited? And... Do we need to update and fix our crumbling infrastructure? Those stories, your reaction, coming up after a short news break. Don't touch that dial. The voice of Boston is you. On 680 WRKO Boston, an iHeartRadio station. It's 1 o'clock. 